Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we're going to have Jordan. Jordan is from Manchester in England, in the UK. So let's see what Jordan has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello Jordan, how are you? I'm good, Will. Thank you very much for asking me to come on. How are you today? Very well. Thanks so much for taking the time. I know you are traveling. I know you are in Bilbao right now. So That's right, thank yeah. Thanks so much for taking the time. So tell me, how is your day going so far? How was your trip? It was okay. It was not too bad. Um, usually, I mean, I travel a lot for work, as I'm sure you know, but it can be very stressful sometimes. But today, I was got to the airport, not busy. My taxi wasn't late. The plane was on time. The food was good. What more <laughs> can you ask for, right? And why Bilbao? Uh, so I'm here at the moment, um, the regional broadcaster, they do the TV for the whole of um, whole of this region. They're upgrading their TV system. Um, I'm part of the team that designed uh, the initial um, upgrades. And now I'm here on site to come and um, to come and install it, which is always very exciting, but also very tense, because if things go wrong, everybody looks at you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so tell me, where are you from, Jordan? Uh, originally, I'm from Manchester in the UK. Mm, born and raised? Born and raised, yeah. But I've lived, uh, I lived, when I was 18, I moved to Nigeria. And then I moved to Kenya. And then I moved back to the UK. So I've been around. Wow. And why is that? Why that journey in Africa? Uh, again, work. So the I, I'd not long been out of university, uh, maybe <laughs> two years. And I joined a company who design um tv systems that like the work that i do now okay um one proposal that i put forward was for the bbc in africa bbc nigeria and we won we won the project and my boss then said uh, okay you've done the work now you have to go there and do it so it was supposed to be a three-week project well it turned into six months of being <laughs> over there yeah wow. six months yeah i was there for a long time wow so I believe um, when I was checking your profile, you are an engineer. Yeah. Correct. So what's the best part of being an engineer? What do you like the most about your career? It's, if you would have asked me this a year ago, I would have said the travel because we get to go and see some exotic places. We get to go and meet some new people. Um, nowadays, I think the thing that excites me the most is completion because there's something addicting about... Okay, so the way that these work, the last week of the project i'll be on site with the customer and provided everything goes smoothly they will have a countdown five four and then your work goes on air and then there is 10 seconds of silence while you know while everybody's like and then it works and then all of a sudden hey everybody's clapping those those moments are what i live for and hopefully the end of this week we should have one of those so Amazing. So you plan yeah. to stay there for a week um, in Bilbao? Yeah, just for the week. Amazing. Okay, yeah. so during the interview, I'm going to explore a little bit more about your life and also about your point of views, okay? Sure. But before we start our journey within the Magic Box, so would you like you to tell me something interesting about yourself or maybe something that not many people know about you? Oh. Something that's interesting about myself. Uh, or something that not many people know about me. This is really boring, but I'm kind of proud of this. I was 16 on the 6th of the 6th, 2006. And I don't know what you can, I don't, I don't know what you can make of that. But um, yeah, I that was that. one that I kept to myself. <laughs> I love that. Oh my God, that's amazing. It's a day. Do, so tell me that this day when, you know, this special date, where were you, what you were doing? Tell me a little bit. Of course, you're celebrating, but do you remember the date? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't realise it myself. I was out uh, not drinking on the park with my friends <laughs> uh, because I was only 16. <laughs> but um, I was out with my friend Sean and he said, you know, you turned 16 on the 6th of the 6th, 2006. And I was like, oh my God, this calls for one thing only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fantastic, dude. Amazing. Jordan, are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and share your point of views? Sure. Amazing. Welcome to William and the Magic Box. Thank you so very I have much. Here best, I have here my best. Full of 
wonderful questions, okay? I'm just gonna play a song just for us to relax before the first question, all right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Yes, you can always join me. <laughs> right, so during the interview, if it comes up a question that you don't want to answer, you don't want to talk about, always can change, okay? Okay. Amazing. First question for you is, tell us a funny or a memorable... Um, sorry, let me start it again. Tell us a funny story or a moment that happened to you when you were a child at school. Oh, when I was a child at school. Oh, my God. Okay, so... I was, uh, I'm, I'm, and I think I was about seven or eight at this, and I don't really have the best memory, but this is one stick out memory that is like a core memory for me. I don't know why I did it, but um, we was kids, and my friend Tom had his hand like this, and everybody, for some reason, he was my best friend, and for some reason, everybody was like, show us what's in your hand, and he wouldn't do it, he wouldn't do it, wouldn't show it, and everybody would turn to me and say, Jordan, do you know what's in there? And I'd say, yeah, but I didn't, I didn't know. After about 15 minutes on the playground, We've got like five or six other boys around us and Tom goes, okay. And he opens his hand and it's a worm. <gasps> it's a worm. And then another boy, Scott, just like this, just picks it up and it and ate it. Oh my God. And, no. it. and I don't know why. I just remember looking around at everybody shocked and I just found it so funny. I just found it hilarious. Like I got home and told my mum about it laughing and my mum's like, yeah, that's weird. Why did he do that? I don't know. Yeah. Did you, you like school growing up? Uh, I liked primary school. I didn't really like high school. I got a little bit bullied in high school. Why is that? Um, I was quite loquacious. I was a geek. I liked, uh, you know, nerdy stuff. And back in the 90s, growing up in, in, in the UK, that wasn't allowed. You know, you, you had to be a skinhead. You had to like football. You had to, uh, all the man stuff, you know, and I just didn't like that. I liked sitting, playing on my little PlayStation and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I was quite, I was quite fat as well. Mm, that didn't help. <laughs> and do you have siblings as well, Jordan? Say again? Do you have siblings as well, brothers and sisters? I do. I have two younger sisters. I see. And which person in your family you feel more close to or more connected with right now? Probably my dad. And it's because... We've had a bit of a tragedy in the family the last sort of few months. So, uh, bizarrely, that event has driven me and my dad closer. We didn't used to speak much before wow. it happened, but now it's every other day. I'll text him or I'll phone him, just check in on him, you know. Um, it was giving me the opportunity to learn more about my dad. You know, for example, I, I go to the gym quite a lot now, and I found out that my dad used to go to the gym, and I, I think to myself, like, Oh. I'm 30 years old. How do I not already know this about my parents, you know? Amazing. Wow. It's wow. so interesting sometimes how life, you know, those, you know, events in life mm. that bring us together somehow and you get to know the person much better. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see that your dad is watching this interview right now and you have a yes. moment, an opportunity to send him a message. message. What would you say? Keep your chin up, dad. It's going to get better. Sorry, it's going to get worse before it gets better because that's just how heartbreak works. I know that I love you. We all love you. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Next question, let's do it. Yeah, sure. This is good. Hey, Jordan from Manchester in the UK. Yes. Tell us about your guilt pleasure. My guilty pleasure? <laughs> Dominoes. Oh my God, I cannot get enough of Dominoes. So, uh, as I mentioned, you know, I, I go to the gym quite a lot. Um, my diet is very specific. I have to eat, you know, within a certain calorie range or a certain protein. <laughs> There's been times where I've just been driving past Dominoes and I'm going, nope, nope. <laughs> and I'm looking at it going, nope. And then I find my hands like, oh my God, what's happening? What's happening? No. <laughs> Off I go to Domino's, and then the next thing I'm sitting in the car park with a 12 inch pizza on my own, half gone, thinking, Why have I done this? <laughs> and then I have to go and put the box in the bin so my partner doesn't find out. <laughs> so, yeah, at the moment, I can't stop eating Domino's, and my skin is breaking out for it. But, you know, this is a lesson I refuse to learn. <laughs> and what's your favorite pizza from Domino's? It's got to be either the Meteor, because they do a barbecue base. So the sauce is like a barbecue, and then it's all different kind of meats. Or the mm -hmm. pepperoni passion but i find the pepperoni passion 
if I eat too fast, it gives me incredible heartburn. I don't know about you, but I think once I get past the age of like 30, even a deep breath can cause heartburn these days. It sucks. <laughs> Yes, I understand your point. And I actually love pepperoni pizza as well. I can eat like the whole thing. I love it. Yeah. Wow. I feel hungry now. You're saying about pizza. I feel <laughs> I'm so sorry, Will. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Next question. Jordan, before the next question, of course, we got connected from TikTok. Yeah, that's how um, our path crossed. Tell okay. me something. I was checking your profile a little bit. I was uh, looking at some of your videos. What's the mes the message behind? What um, people who see your page, people who connect with you from social media, from TikTok, mm -hmm. what's something that you would like people to take with them? What do you like? What is the idea behind your page? Origi it's a great question. Originally, I started the account because um, with the job that I do, I, you know, I get to see quite a lot of stuff. It's quite interesting, you know, the, the technology behind it. I get to go and see a lot of nice countries and some nice experiences and I, I, I originally I wanted to create the account to show my day-to-day -day job and see mm -hmm. you know what what people thought of what it's like to be an international broadcast engineer and then it sort of evolved into more um just sharing my day-to-day -day. and that could be where I'm sat at home my cats um gym stuff although I've not really shared anything in the gym yet um and that's been it's, it's weird because that's been more well received than just posting about work so i guess um a cult of personality would be a bad way to put it but i just want to show people um what it's like to be an international broadcast engineer because there are times where i'll get a phone call and they'll say okay we need you in los angeles in three days wow I, yeah, and I'm a parent as well, you know, and I've got to deal with my partner and say, I'm sorry, you know, you're going to have to look after my daughter. And... So it can be it can be stressful, but also very beautiful. And I hope that's what some people can take away from it, is there's a profound beauty in being able to travel the world and get paid for it. I see. Actually, you're talking about your cat. I saw this video of the cats in your shoulder, the little cat. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's adorable, isn't it? So he's he's caused a stir at the moment because um, we already have one blue cat, and he's uh, he's he's the big baby, and he does not like that there's a new big baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Next question for you is: Do you consider yeah. yourself to be a spiritual person, and how? Yes, uh, categorically, yes. Um, I uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, Will. I'm, I'm. There was a time in my life I was not a very good person, and I have no shame in admitting that. And the reason I have no shame in admitting that is because luckily I was blessed with the ability to be, be introspective and look at the person that I am and do it with an unfiltered lens. You know, um, so because of that, in the last sort of ten years or so, I've been able to make positive changes in my life, and I believe that. A lot of that was due to spiritualism and exploring, because I believe if, if you find yourself, they have a saying, right? Hurt people, hurt people. And I believe spiritualism plays a big part in that. You need to be able to look within for an unbiased lens. And I believe that is the very core of spiritualism. And if you don't like what you find, then you, congratulations, you found what you need to change. And um, it's helped Absolutely. me become a lot more compassionate, a lot more friendly, a lot more approachable, and just a lot more able to deal with stress in life, you know? Wow. Thanks for sharing, George. I think it's amazing for you to share something like that. I think, you know, it's inspiring to see pe people watching this interview right now. They're going to go like, oh, interesting to, to talk about it. And when was the moment that you realized, okay, I need to change this path. I need to, you know, become a better person. Did something happen or just felt like, okay, let me do it? No, I can tell you the exact moment. I can tell you the exact moment. So, um, uh, one, I think I was about 26, 27, I moved to a new area in the UK called High Wycombe. And I met a friend, Chelsea. Shout out Chelsea for when she, when she, when she watches this. Um, and I was, I was single at the time. And I was seeing a couple of girls at the same time. And I turned to Chelsea my my friend and said, you know, like I'm, I'm seeing her, and then later on tonight I'm seeing her as well, expecting like, you know, encouragement or just like, hey, you know, something. And she was like, why are you doing that? 
And I was, I was taken aback. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, these are people with feelings that you... Wow. Forgive my language, which she was, John, that's dickhead behaviour. And I was like, more hurt, not because she swore at me, but more hurt because that's my friend. And I and even if my... And I think that's what a good friend is. A good friend shouldn't be scared to call you out on your toxic behaviour. And that's exactly what she did. She And it, it, for... Um, a few months, I didn't speak to her because I thought, how dare you? But then on hindsight, with a bit of spirituality, like you say, I realised she was right. You know, these, I'm, these are people, not playthings. Who do I think I am? That is not for me to do. Wow. Um, yeah. And ever since then, I've been more conscious in myself, more reflective with the decisions that I make and just a little bit more introspective about the way I'm going to be with people, especially people that come and go from your life. You know, wow. nobody deserves to be hurt or treated less than simply because you have decided that you don't want to spend time with that person anymore well her name is chelsea our friend you said chelsea yeah chelsea you are a good friend my god you hit right in the right moment in the right place i think that what friends are for and again you took in a such personal way you didn't talk to her however you look back and you go like wow you just did the best job ever it became <laughs> Absolutely. I love that. I think, as you said, friends are for that, to call you out when you are behaving. Well, here's, here's the thing, William. I, I, I have, obviously, have, I've had friends that have been there since childhood. Um, some of them are going to get upset that I'm going to say this now. But those those friends were the ones that would encourage that kind of behavior. And I won't say any names. No, no. <laughs> no names, but there would be some friends that would have encouraged that kind of behavior. Whereas when I moved away from my hometown, I was able to spend time with Chelsea and, and me. And, you know, she's one of my best friends now. She's married with a child, like, she's really happy. And, yeah, for her to do that was really humbling experience for me, but it also opened my eyes and made me realize, you know, this is what growth is. Absolutely. And those friends as well, do, who they were encouraging you so as well, I don't think they are, they, were, they are just not ready yet to kind of give the right message for you, maybe. Or maybe they, they thought that that would be a, a thing that just supports you. I don't think they were bad friends you're just in a, in a place that you're not there to support you you know some correct that's correct. how it's you're, you're yeah this as i say I, i say this but there are also some of the most fiercely loyal people i've ever What's met in my life you know i could call them at 3 a.m and say I, i really need somewhere to stay they'd be like yeah. why are you not here already come absolutely next question ready yes let's do it next one yes <laughs> Next question is, what's the, the, the most memorable dream you ever had? Dream? Yeah. Oh my God. This is crazy. This is mental. Okay, this was a couple of months back and it, it shocked me that that much that I called my, my, at the time we was getting on, I called my mother, my father, I called my sisters, I, my daughter was there. Okay, this is wild, okay? And I don't know why. So I was asleep in my bedroom And I, I woke up in my own bed and I can see something in the corner of the room shimmering, like a shimmer. And I'm like, scared, immediately fear. I'm like, nope, close my eyes. And then I look and it's still there. And after about five or 10 minutes, I start to calm down. And I think, what is this? So I get out of my bed and I walk up to it and I'm looking at it. And it's like the light is fractured. I can't describe it. Well, I can't describe it. But I went to put my hand in and it went, excuse me, I was like, oh my God, you can talk. He's like, what do you mean I could talk? Why would I not be able to talk? I'm like, you're a person. And then he said, you're being a little bit weird about this. I'm like, no, I'm not. And I panicked. And I went to run out into the hallway from my bedroom. I opened the door and I don't know why. I, I know I was in rural Japan. Oh my God. <laughs> I was in rural Japan, just looking down at an old... Japanese, it was beautiful, immaculately clean, really small little dingy shops. And at the bottom of the road was my daughter and she was about 25 years old. She looked older and I woke up, I woke up like, and my daughter was in, in, um, in the, asleep in the bed next to me. And I'm like, Liv, wait, and I had to wake her up and tell her like, I've just seen you as an adult. <laughs> Here's the thing though, I don't really dream much. So for that to be, and it was so vivid, I'm like, I could experience, I could feel the sun on my skin. I could smell what it was like there. Um, banana, bananas, bizarre, really bizarre experience. Um, 
yeah, I can't explain it to this day, but it got, it got to me that much that I, I told everyone that I could. I'm like, it was real, I swear. Obviously, now <laughs> a few months have passed, I realised it was just a dream, but it felt that real. It blew wow. my head off. I know that some dreams, it, they, 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 look, they, they feel so real that when you wake up, you go like, my God, it, I just was there. It, it, it happened. <laughs> yeah, I exactly know. Jordan, when you think about yourself, when you analyze yourself, what's the biggest joy of being you? What do you like the most about being Jordan? Uh, you know, if you would have asked me this a year ago, I would have said nothing. Uh, but now, I think it's my resilience. So, I've had a, a lot of heartbreak and tragedy happen in my life recently. Um, and I guess a couple of weeks back, I, I sort of, you know, when you lie in bed at night and the TV's on, you're not really watching it, you just sort of detuned. Mm -hmm. I can just remember thinking to myself, the situation that's going on in your life at the moment, this would have crushed you a year ago. You wouldn't have been able to do your job. You wouldn't have been able to get out of bed. It would have just, I'd have just folded into depression. And I don't know why I just, it was like a spurring on moment where I thought, no, I, I can do this. I can get through this. You know, it's going to be fine. And it is. So I think, yeah, the biggest thing, it, it's almost equipped, equipped me with confidence now to just rush into problems head on and see what, what's the worst that can happen. The problem stays a problem. The best that can happen, it gets fixed. Absolutely. Do you feel like you are living your best life right now? Uh, almost. Almost. I feel like something changed. Um, on, uh, I'd say about three or four weeks ago, something for me just changed where things started to fall into place. I felt like I was stagnant and stale. I felt like things were moving really slowly in life. And then... Um, more and more positive things started to happen. Like um, I got finally got the house that I wanted. I finally, you know, finished decorating certain rooms. Um, I've got the cat that I wanted. My daughter passed the GCSEs. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, things couldn't be better at the moment, but I know that they're going to get better still. Amazing. Any questions left? Let's do it. Cool. Let's hey, Jordan, next question. Sure. Define yourself in a season of the year and why. That's a tough one. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say autumn. Tell me why. I would say autumn because depending on the mood that I'm in, I can be either side of that season. I can be very cold and I can be very warm. I like that. I like yeah. that. And I something. I it's my favorite season of the year. You know, autumn. There's something about the colors. About it's not too cold. It's not too warm. This crispy morning, like today, London was this beautiful morning, like sunny. Um, and somebody told me once that uh, you feel very connected with the season when you're born. And for me, it works well because my birthday is November. So I I always love the autumn. I think mm. it's great. Amazing. Yeah. Two questions left. Let's do it. Yes. I love this. This is so cool. <laughs> Before the next question, Jordan, as uh, you know, I can see how much you appreciate your job, how much you enjoy it being an international broadcaster um, engineer. But the flip mm. side, what do you find most challenging about the career? The, uh, funnily enough, the, the, the same thing I enjoy the most about it, which is the technology. And so there is there is always a learning curve with new projects. There is always something new to learn, whether it be some type of code or it could be some kind of protocol that is was agreed upon 20 years ago by men that are long dead now. Like there is always a thing to learn within this system. So not every T as you know, I'm sure you're aware, not every TV channel is the same. So there'll be certain customers with really bespoke solutions that they will ask for it in one sentence and I'll think immediately impossible. But then three weeks later, when I've done some research and some learning, suddenly the impossible becomes possible again. So that can be a negative because sometimes you do come away and have to say to your customer, we just can't do it. But most of the time, I'm pretty positive about it. I mean, you ha you have to be interested in your job, right? You have to be, you have to find it interesting. You have to fa have some passion about it. So, yeah, um, but it does suck sometimes when you can't deliver 
what was promised despite it being sold. <laughs> All right. Next question for you is, what do you think people need to know about each other before they start a relationship? Oh, that's good. <laughs> Which side of the bed they sleep on, for starters? <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, this is a difficult one because I guess ultimately these two people need to know what they value the most. Mm -hmm. and whether or not those two values are going to be able to be offered up by the partner. For instance, you'll get some some people who are very um, goal-driven, want their partner to be, you know, I want you to be successful, I want you to be career-driven, I want you to go and earn millions. But then you'll also get people that will say, I don't care what you do as long as you come home to me every night and we love each other and it's caring and passionate. So I think the most important thing is to know what your partner is going to offer and what you can offer them and make sure that they're compatible more than anything because these are kind of things that they don't reveal themselves until six months, a year, two years down the line. And then there's heartbreak involved for everyone. And as I don't know if you're, you've been through that kind of real turbulent heartbreak, it sucks. You'll lose weight, your mind will change on you. You know, the real traumatic things to first it's a deep psychological wound heartbreak so in order to avoid that i think really understanding your partner's intentions and what they want out of the relationship is paramount yeah i agree with you i think heartbroken it's the it's a pain that if there exists one pill to take out this pain will be the perfect thing because it's so painful you know you as you said you lose weight you don't want to eat you don't want to see people you just want to be closed and as you said you just need to work on it before you know what I mean to to and sometimes as well you should be honest to yourself because sometimes you get involved in, in a moment or a situation or something about the person and sometimes you just need to you yeah. know get to know a little bit more because uh, it, the pain afterwards is is very strong and it's difficult to yeah, get rid of it's overwhelming it's, it's a, a real complex psychological wound and 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 if you like any wound if you don't treat it properly you know it will fester and that's why to coming back to your question it's really important you understand and your partner understands what it is you can both offer and you're expecting absolutely next question ready yes let's do it this one let's do it. But before the last question, people watch this interview right now, they would like to start a career as an engineer, an international podcast engineer. What would be mm -hmm. your best piece of advice for those people? Uh, so the area with which I study requires a degree, but luckily the degree itself doesn't have any rec um, prerequisites. You don't need uh, science, English, maths, you don't need any of that. You can... Um, I'm going to shout out my university, excuse me, my, my university is the University of Salford. Um, the course, the head of the course there, Lawrence, um, I didn't have the qualifications to do the course. I was just interested in it. I wrote mm -hmm. him a letter. I didn't even apply through normal means. I wrote the man a letter. I looked him up. I wrote him a letter basically explaining that I have the passion, the drive. I, you know, um, two days later, I'm sitting in front of him and he's saying, this is what the course is. This is what we expect of you. Here's you know, opportunities. Are you interested? I was like, yeah, I'm interested. That sounds awesome. And then the next thing I know, two years later, I've got the degree. And, you know, I thought I was going to be one of those, you know, you send the CVs out as a graduate. Um, the response was insane. I think I've sent about 15 CVs out. Nine of them came back saying, would you like an interview? I wow. interviews all over the country. So it's a wow. real in-demand industry at the moment. So if you want to be a broadcast engineer, um, get onto the University of Salford. There's also the University of Bournemouth. They're probably the top two broadcast universities in the country at the moment. Amazing. Great. Last question is, oh, tough question now. Last one. If your plane was going down and you could oh. call just one person to say goodbye, which person that would be? It's got to be my daughter. It's got to be my daughter. And you know, oh. I know the first thing she'd do is she'd think I was being stupid. <laughs> she'd say, shut up, Dad. You know, I think it was sarcastic, but it would have to be my daughter and just just explain to her, you know, life's going to be a bit tough while I'm not there, but 
you'll be fine. She's a very strong character. She's a very strong person. And I mean, I would hope the plane survives. <laughs> but if it doesn't, <laughs> at least I know confidently that she's going to be okay. I'm, like I say, some of my best friends, they all know and love her and she would be completely looked after. Oh, so, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, it's not the end yet. Let's play now the word association game, okay? I'm going to give away some words. Just tell one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking, okay? Sure. One word for money. Power. Family. Blood. Life. Death. Fear. Hope. Love. Passion. Politics. Mm. Power again. Religion. Uh, compassion. Sex. Love and rock and roll. <laughs> Love and rock and roll. <laughs> um, friendship. Uh, love. Desire. Passion again. Regret. Pain. Success. Joy. Wish. Prayers. Happiness. Life. One word for Manchester. Gritty. I like this. I never heard this word before. Say again. Gritty. A ah, gritty. <laughs> gritty. Yeah. Well, that's the perfect one. word to describe anybody from Manchester. Gritty. You made my day. I learned something new now. I like it. I love it. Um, one word for England. Oh. And the last one now. International broadcaster engineer. One word. Me. Amazing. Let's pretend now I'm going to meet your daughter. Yeah. And I'm going yeah. to ask her, define your dad in one positive word and one negative word only. What she would say? She would say, I know exactly what she'd say. She would say, stupid and late. <laughs> stupid being positive, and late being the, the negative. Definitely. You always late. I, <laughs> I could get a wristwatch tattooed on me and I'd still be late. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it doesn't sound very English, do you? <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. It's, it, it's awful. I mean, even with, with the job that I do at the moment, um, so even some of my superiors know that, like, my, my timekeeping is a mess. But I'm, luckily, I'm trusted in the sense that they know that if they're giving a deadline, I'll meet the deadline. It's just if I'm 15 minutes late in the morning, just let me be 15 minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just saying that because I'm from Brazil, uh, Jordan, and when I arrived in London, um, you know, Brazilian people, South American people, you have this tendency of arriving late. It's a Brazilian thing, you know. And I remember my first job in, in London, it was an Italian restaurant, and I arrived, like, late. And uh, this manager told me, William, you are in England, you are in London, you need to arrive on time. I was like, oh my God, it's true. From that day on, I learned my lesson. That's it. Yeah. I always... <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've got, it's the same. Yeah, I, I grew up in a very punctual school, very punctual jobs. I don't know why, Well, It just, it just doesn't, I don't know, I, I don't know. I understand your point. It's just so mm -hmm. I think about you. It's just I think about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's play now Jordan in the magic box and you can ask me a yes. question. But before that, let's play the music one more time. Let's do it. Okay, you, before you ask me the question, tell me about your tattoos. Which one is the very first one you ever had and the latest one? Okay, first one I ever had was... Oh, I'm so embarrassed, but here we go. <laughs> was this guy... Oh, wow, I can see. Oh, my God. It sucks. It, I know, I know. I was 14. I was 14 years old. And oh. I got it done by a guy in his living room while he was smoking cigarettes, while he was, like, tattooing me with a cigarette in his mouth kind of thing. No gloves, no wipes. Just me just sitting there having paid £30. Just, like... Wow. Um, but this one, this is, my, this is a sleeve. Um, it's inspired by an artist called H.R. Geiger. Okay. 
and he believed very much in the biomechanical um, movement, the ethos, basically the understanding that one day machines and biology, they will merge together. Um, and we're seeing that already. It's things such as prosthetic limbs, prosthetic lungs and hearts. So if you can imagine. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. It's all like pipes and cables coming through the skin. Um, really? Yeah, but there is still a lot to go. So we've got all of this done. But the, I've got hair to go and I'm really scared because this is going to hurt. <laughs> it's going to hurt. <laughs> okay, you can ask me a question now, Jordan. I don't, I don't know if someone's going to have asked you of this before, but what made you start this channel? Well, great question. You know, 2020, when the world went upside down, remember? Yeah. So um, before that, I was already thinking about creating something on YouTube where I could connect with people, I could express myself, I could let people express themselves as well. But I didn't know how. I didn't know what I could do. I want to do something different, something that, uh, uh, that I could express myself. Um, so 2020, when the when the COVID was on, um, remember you could leave the house once a day for exercise, remember? Yeah. So I went for a run in the park. I remember the date. I remember the place. Literally, I was running, 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 thinking about, you know, my thoughts was everywhere. And suddenly, this idea came along. And I was like, oh, my God, that's oh. what I'm going to do. I'm going to cre create a question, uh, like a, um, a, a channel where I can have random questions and I'm going to ask random people around the globe and see what they what their their opinion about it and exactly how it started this way and I'll tell you something now um when I look back from my life as a teenager when I came to England in Portugal as well um when I meet friends I was already doing that uh, Jordan I remember like going on holidays with friends there was always a, a time I was like who was your favorite teacher tell me something <laughs> about so I was doing that already, of course, in a, such a smaller proportion. So yeah, it's about it's a channel where I can express myself, and I love doing the show because I, I meet so many people around the globe and seeing people sharing their stories, and it's amazing. So that's how the channel started. In a row. Yeah, you seem very you seem very happy and like people people oriented. I've seen you've got a lot of videos as well, and you still maintain the same energy. So I can tell that this is like passion project for you and i love that like i'm i'm hoping all the success in the world with it from youtube you. i'm hoping you know this can become your full-time job if it isn't already can't wait i'm working hard for that <laughs> you'll get there you'll get there will amazing thanks so much jordan thanks for being so kind and sweet and just said my invitation also it was very inspiring for you to share your memories the happiness in your eyes when you talk about your daughter my god what's in a beautiful uh oh, beautiful thank story so thanks again my god you are, you are in Bilbao. you should be resting you should be i don't know going to see something but you are here so thanks so much for that after yeah Bye. after you're gonna go yeah <laughs> well i've got to go to the gym and then i'm gonna go find a nice tapas restaurant eat some food have one guilty beer and then uh maybe i'm right by the beach which is pretty good so Oh, Maybe wow. we'll go for a little dip in the sea. We'll see. Amazing. Before you go, if you can share a positive message or anything that you live by. I'm going to quote a movie. Okay. I'm going to quote a movie, and I think it's a, it's a really good, um, a really good way to live your life. And it's don't take life too seriously because nobody gets out alive. Totally. Live life day by day, you know, enjoy yourself, be good. And I think that's uh, the meaning of life. Just to become a better person every single day, enjoying the journey. Yeah, exactly that. Amazing. Okay, it was a pleasure. Thanks so much, okay? Yeah, no, pleasure's all mine. Thank you very much, William. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, First, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.